Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis of Thermology Tutorials. So today we will learn about one of the important clinical topic that is corneal edema. So in this video we will be discussing about what is corneal edema, what are the types of corneal edema, what causes corneal edema and how to differentiate between each cause by the clinical examination and what is the management of corneal edema. This corneal edema is an important topic for the postgraduates and it is equally important for undergraduates because this is frequently asked question in our examinations. So without much delay, let's begin our video on corneal edema. So why this topic of corneal edema is important? As you know, the cornea is one of the main refracting surface of the eye, which helps in focusing the rays of light onto the cornea. So this property of the cornea is because of the transparency of the cornea. To maintain the transparency of the cornea, so the relative state of dehydration of cornea is one of the important factor for the corneal transparency. If there is any imbibition of the fluid in the cornea, that is the corneal edema occurs, then the relative state of dehydration is hampered, thereby the transparency is hampered, thereby the rays of light are not focused onto the retina. So the main purpose of the eye, that is the vision is hampered. So it is very important to know about the corneal edema. So let's discuss this corneal edema under the headings of definition of the corneal edema, pathophysiological process of corneal edema, Types of corneal edema, symptoms and signs of corneal edema, various causes for corneal edema as well as the treatment. So coming to the definition of the corneal edema, it is nothing but the accumulation of the fluid in the cornea to be specific in the layers of the epithelium and the stroma. So the definition of the corneal edema is the accumulation of the fluid in the layers of the cornea to be specific in the epithelial layer as well as the stroma layers of the cornea. Let's discuss the pathophysiological process involved in the corneal edema. The physiology which is involved in the maintenance of the transparency of the cornea as well as the relative state of dehydration I have discussed extensively in my video on physiology of the cornea. Please do watch that video. Just to recap, these are the things which are important in the relative state of dehydration of the cornea. That is, the first one is the epithelium and the endothelium. To say in the simple words, both epithelium and the endothelium act as barriers for the entry of water into the cornea. Clear? So the epithelium and endothelium both have tight junctions. So they will not allow the fluid from either the tear film or from the aqueous humor to enter into the stroma. This is the first function of endothelium and the epithelium. And secondly, we have a very important pump mechanism which is acting at the endothelium that is sodium potassium ATPase pump which constantly drives the water out of the cornea. So that keeps the cornea in a state of dehydration. The second thing is the osmotic gradient which is present between the tear film and the cornea and the aqueous humor in the cornea. So both the tear film as well as the aqueous humor are concentrated compared to your corneal stroma. So both the tear film and the aqueous humor also constantly drives the water or the fluid from the cornea and keeps it in a state of dehydration. And this osmotic gradient is made use in the treatment of the corneal edema when you are using the hypertonic solution or the drops to treat the corneal edema. And third thing is the evaporation of the tear film which will again drive the fluid from the cornea and keeps it in a state of dehydration. And this is one of the basis for increased pain and the discomfort which is seen in Fuchs endothelial dystrophy. And the fourth important thing is the intraocular pressure. So let's discuss intraocular pressure in detail now. So the intraocular pressure can lead to corneal edema in two ways. So both acute and the chronic intraocular pressure can lead to a corneal edema. In case of acute rise in intraocular pressure, it opens up the gap between the endothelial cells, thereby draws the fluid from the aqueous humor into the stroma. If there is chronic rise in intraocular pressure, it will lead to damage to the endothelium, thereby leading to damage to the sodium potassium ATPs pump and thereby it will lead to the stromal edema. So we have a formula here that is imbibition pressure, that is the capacity of the cornea to imbibe the fluid is equal to the intraocular pressure minus the swelling pressure of the stroma of the cornea. So normally it is the normal swelling pressure of stroma of cornea is around 50. So if the IOP crosses more than 50, it will invariably lead to the corneal edema. So to summarize the factors which are responsible to prevent the hydration of the cornea or the corneal edema are the first thing is the barrier function of the epithelium and the endothelium and the factors which draws fluid out of the cornea are the evaporation mechanism as well as the osmotic gradient which is present in the tear film as well as the aqueous humor. Whereas the factors which draw the fluid into the cornea are the intraocular pressure and, and the glycosaminic glycans which are present in the cornea. So this is about the pathophysiology. Coming to the symptoms of the corneal edema, here the patient can be completely asymptomatic or they may present with decreased vision or there can be pain 
associated photophobia or it can be associated with lacrimation and the redness of the eye depending upon the cause for the corneal edema. So whenever patient comes with those symptoms which I explained just now, ask in detail about all this that is the age of onset of those symptoms, present since how many days, okay that is duration, the laterality that is whether it is bilateral or unilateral, family history is present or not, ocular medications whether the patient is using any other ocular medications, history of surgery or the trauma to the eye as well as the diurnal variation of the symptom. So it is important to ask this history to point out the cause for the corneal edema. So how this will influence I will discuss when I discuss the causes for the corneal edema. So coming to the examination of the corneal edema. So here a thorough examination using slit lamp is must. So slit lamp examination shows either there is epithelial edema or the stromal edema. So these are the two types of corneal edema that is epithelial edema and the stromal edema. How the normal cornea looks? The normal cornea is that is the anterior surface is smooth with crystal clear transparency. So if there is any problem like the edema or the epithelial breach, it will start changing its color to little grayish thing. So if there is any epithelial defect, okay. So if there is any epithelial defect, which is the reason for your corneal edema, you can easily pick up this epithelial defect with your fluorescent staining. Do FS staining. So we will note down the epithelial defect. When you examine the cornea around the epithelial defect, there is some grayish haze which is seen. So that indicates that there is epithelial defect. So how this epithelial edema presents? Initially again the luster of the cornea is lost. So the cornea becomes lusterless in the initial stages of epithelial edema. So as it progresses it will lead to the microcystic bullae which are formed or the micro bullae which are formed. Later on it will lead to frank bullous keratopathy. Okay. So there will be big bullae which are formed in the corneal epithelium. So that is how the epithelial edema presents and here the patients will have severe pain when the bullae ruptures. Because the corneal nerve endings are directly exposed, so the patient will experience severe pain and discomfort in the epithelial edema, especially in the stage of the bullous keratopathy. Coming to the stromal edema, that is the imbibition of the fluid in the layers of the stroma. Here, when you do the slit examination, when you throw the slit beam, okay, it appears wider than the normal width. So that is one indication, and there will be the presence of DM folds. Okay. So if there are DM folds, it indicates that it is a stromal edema. So here, in case, if there is only stromal edema, patient may not experience much of pain or the discomfort, but there will be decreased vision. So after examining the epithelium and the stroma, go for the examination of the endothelium where you can find something called as the gut head. Okay. So how you examine the endothelium? Under high magnification, make a wide angle between the illumination and the observation unit. Okay. Then focus on the endothelium. There you may find this gut head. So what is this gutter? It is drop like excrescences which are seen on the posterior surface of the cornea. Okay. So this is one of the signs for your Fuchs corneal endothelial dystrophy. So it is very important to examine the endothelium also whenever you are examining the corneal edema patients. Next common word which is frequently used when you are describing the corneal edema is the striate keratopathy. So where it is seen? Striate keratopathy is usually seen in post-operative patients where the corneal sections are made. So here you see a grey lines okay, which are coming from the corneal sections and move across the globe. So why this occurs? Because of the slight folding of the cornea especially the desmets membrane and the posterior lamella of the stroma undergo folding which will lead to the striate keratopathy. This is also one of the signs for our corneal edema. So to summarize the signs, examine for the intactness of the epithelium by doing fluorescent staining. The second is examine the epithelium and, and uh, rule out the bullae in the epithelium. Then examine the stroma, look for the DM folds, examine the endothelium, look carefully for the gut egg. and the last entity is the striate keratopathy. So now let's discuss the various causes for corneal edema and how to differentiate these causes based upon the clinical features. So the first cause is the epithelial defect, the second is where there is endothelial affection or the endothelial dysfunction which can be secondary to raised intraocular pressure okay? or it can be secondary to the trauma or the inflammation or hypoxic conditions or even the medications which are used and the third is secondary to the primary endothelial field. So we will discuss each one now. The first is epithelial defect, endothelial affection secondary to rise intraocular pressure following trauma, inflammation or hypoxia or the medications and the third is the primary endothelial failure. So how the corneal edema secondary to the epithelial dysfunction presents? So the cause is usually the epithelial defect which is present, usually acute in onset and there is stromal edema, okay. Don't get confused because there is epithelial defect, don't tell that it is because of the epithelial edema. It is the stromal edema or the haze which is surrounding the epithelial defect. 
and the epithelial defect you know we can make out by doing the FST. So if the cause is because of the raised intraocular pressure in presence of the normal endothelium, please note this point, in presence of the normal endothelium, if there is raised intraocular pressure and the corneal edema, then it will be like acute in onset, okay, there will be only epithelial edema, it can be in any stage of the epithelial edema, that is right from the haze to the microbullet to the, uh, to the bullous keratopathy. Okay, so there can be microcystic formation and it can be either central or the diffuse epithelial edema. So next is if the corneal edema is secondary to the causes like the trauma or the chemicals or the hypoxia and the inflammation. Here they share a common thing that is the edema is stromal again. It can be either central or diffuse. Okay, and again in most of these cases it is acute in onset. Okay, so those are the common features. So let's discuss each one now. It can be following trauma to the endothelium. Or it can be following usage of the chemicals like zirconium chloride which is used as a preservative in most of the eye drops. Or it can be following chlorhexidine. This entity is also called as hippiclean keratopathy. Okay. That is keratopathy which is following the chlorhexidine. Even the corneal edema can manifest following the usage of the systemic drug that is the amantidine. Even following hypoxia like in case of contact lens users there is manifestation of the corneal edema. And in inflammation that is the inflammation of the endothelium called as endotheliitis okay which occurs in case of herpes simplex keratitis and also manifest as corneal edema coming to the last group of causes for the corneal edema that is the primary endothelial failure whenever there is primary endothelial failure which occurs secondary to most of the endothelial dystrophies like the congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy fuchs endothelial dystrophy or posterior polymorphous dystrophy or even in case of eye syndrome that is iridocorneal endothelial syndromes these will also present with corneal edema the features which are common for this group of causes is it is usually chronic and it is progressing and it is stromal as well as it is diffuse edema. Okay, so let's discuss each one in brief now. So coming to CHED that is congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy. It is rare disease because of either focal or generalized absence of the endothelial cells. So it has two types CHED1 and 2. One is autosomal dominant in inheritance pattern whereas 2 is autosomal recessive. The onset is usually perinatal okay, and it is bilateral disease with symmetrical involvement. So here comes the importance of asking those relevant questions which I told before. So the answer to those questions may hint towards the diagnosis. So how these children of CHED present? They usually present with diffuse corneal edema. So the cornea will either be bluish to greyish in color. Later it will progress to the ground glass appearance and then to the complete opacification of the cornea. Children will present with variable amount of defect in the visual acuity depending upon the stage of the disease. Coming to next cause in the primary endothelial dysfunction that is the Fuchs endothelial dystrophy. Usually it is bilateral, females are more commonly affected and it is more frequently associated with primary open angle glaucoma. It can be either autosomal dominant or sporadic in nature. This is one dystrophy which appears in the old age compared to all other corneal dystrophies. The Fuchs endothelial dystrophy usually appears in old age but still it can appear in the younger age group. Okay, so when you examine the cornea, you will find the gut type. So how the disease progresses in Fuchs endothelial dystrophy? First, yeah. there is appearance of the gut type, which is nothing but the excrescences which are present in the posterior surface of the cornea. This will progress to the broken bronze appearance. So there will be endothelial decompensation, which will lead to the stromal edema. So if the stromal edema increases by 30%, it will lead to the epithelial edema, leading to again the bullet formation and the rupture of the bullet will lead to the pain. This is how the Fuchs endothelial dystrophy will progress. Coming to the last type of the endothelial dystrophy that is the posterior polymorphous dystrophy which is again a rare disease asymptomatic. So this PPD is usually asymptomatic bilateral but it is asymmetrical in involvement. Here the corneal endothelium is similar to the corneal epithelium. So it loses its function autosomal dominant in inheritance and it is present at birth or soon after and there is vesicular endothelial lesions which are present in the endothelium. And later these vesicles will join to form the band-like lesions in the corneal endothelium thereby leading to the opacity of the cornea. And this is more commonly associated with the iris abnormalities as well as glaucoma and the Alpert syndrome. So this is about PPD or the posterior polymorphous dystrophy. So after doing thorough slit lamp examination you will almost know the cause for the corneal edema. Along with that you can also use the pachymetry to know the thickness of the cornea which will help in monitoring the patient. And the second is the specular microscopy which will give the endothelial count thereby giving the clue for the cause as well as the prognosis for the patient. If the endothelium count is less than 700 cells per millimeter square, it is a critical stage where the corneal decompensation will happen.
So coming to the last part of this video, that is the treatment of the corneal edema. Here it can be divided into the treatment of associated abnormalities as well as the treatment of the corneal edema per se. So in the abnormalities, we should treat the raised intraocular pressure as well as the inflammation. The inflammation which is the cause for corneal edema like the endotheliitis which is, which is seen secondary to the herpes infection. So here you should use the steroids to reduce the inflammation and that will take care of the corneal edema. So unless you treat the inflammation, the corneal edema will not come down. The second thing is reducing the intraocular pressure. Here you should use the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors cautiously because the carbonic anhydrase enzyme which is present in the corneal endothelium if that is inhibited that can lead to corneal edema okay so the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors that is hastazolamide can worsen the corneal edema sometimes so you should carefully use this if you want to use and there are reports of the corneal edema which is happening following the topical usage of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that is dorsalamide okay so that is about the treatment of associated abnormality so next moving on to the treatment of the corneal edema proper so coming to the treatment options for the corneal edema the first thing is the hypertonic solution this is the most commonly used treatment for the corneal edema that is 5% sodium chloride can be used remember this hypertonic solutions are useful whenever there is epithelial edema it may not be of much help when there is stromal edema the alternate for the sodium chloride is the glycerin but the glycerin will cause more amount of stinging sensation so use the anesthetic drops before applying the glycerin then it will clear of the corneal edema temporarily so this is for the temporary clearing of the corneal edema the next is the bandage contact lens so whenever the patient is having pain and severe discomfort you can go for bandage contact lens but here again you should weigh the benefits and risk of the bandage contact lens so it will decrease the pain and discomfort but it may increase the chances of infection and the corneal ulcer formation and it will hamper the oxygen permeability to some extent so use the bandage contact lens with a high oxygen permeability the third treatment option is the anterior stromal cautery using the thermal cautery give the burns in the bowman's layer so that will create a firm adhesion between the epithelium as well as stroma thereby preventing the edema and then we have the conjunctival flap and again this is indicated whenever the visual prognosis is poor but the patient is having very severe pain and discomfort so here first we will completely remove the epithelium cover the cornea with the conjunctival flap then we have amniotic membrane transplantation serves the similar purpose as that of the conjunctival flap the definitive treatment for the corneal edema is the penetrating keratoplasty okay where you are completely replacing the deceased cornea with a new cornea thereby regaining all the functions of the cornea uh, whenever the endothelium is damaged then the treatment becomes DLEK that is deep lamellar endothelial keratoplasty where you will just be replacing the deceased endothelium with a donor endothelium so this is about the treatment of the corneal edema per se so hope this video on the corneal edema is useful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notification do leave your valuable comments please do like and share my videos